This house is for me and my parents. Write up the divorce papers and get out. My husband Leon, who has been treating me like a maid and always favoring his parents, is again saying whatever he pleases. I've been patient so far to avoid upsetting my parents who were so happy about our marriage, but if he is going to behave like this in front of them, it suits me fine. All right, I'll do as you say. I left the room, taking my distraught parents with me. When will he realize his numerous misunderstandings? I'm looking forward to it. My name is Jessica, 29 years old. I was born when both of my parents were 40 years old. They wanted a child, but it didn't come easy and infertility treatments were not as advanced as they are now, so they had a lot of distress. Just as they were about to give up on having a child, that's when I came into their lives. Even now, my parents still talk about it joyfully, being the long-awaited child. I was doted on immensely by my parents. Even when looking at my childhood photos, I can feel the love my parents had for me. Although my parents were not wealthy, they always celebrated events like my birthday, Easter, and my kindergarten graduation in a grand manner. They were also very supportive of my studies. If I said I wanted to learn English, they immediately enrolled me in an English conversation class and bought me a lot of books because I loved reading. They also said, if it's something you need for your studies, just let us know, and we'll get it for you. Looking back, I now realize that they must have struggled quite a bit to cover my education expenses, but they never showed it. They always treated me with smiles and celebrated greatly when I got good grades. As I grew older, sometimes my friends would mistake my parents for my grandparents, but I never minded. I met my now husband Leon at a matchmaking service. Leon, like me, was an only child with elderly parents, and our circumstances were similar. We had the same hobbies, and our conversations were lively. We dated smoothly and decided to get married. My loving parents were in tears at our wedding blessing our marriage. At first, I was working after our marriage. Fully unproposed, we both have elderly parents. Of course, we don't feel dissatisfied about it, but wouldn't it be nice if they were younger? It's tough to raise a child in old age. We want to have children sooner, so can you quit your job and focus on raising a child? I loved my job, but what Leon said made sense. I remembered my mother telling me that her night shift job and the stress from it, as well as not being able to get the timing right for conception, might have been reasons why they had difficulty having me. I thought it might be a good idea to quit my job and focus on creating a conducive environment for having a baby. Plus, Leon said, you can return to work when our child is old enough, which reassured me. Fortunately, I had a professional certification that would allow me to return to work any time, so I quit my job and became a full-time homemaker. However, after our marriage, Leon started acting high and mighty. Just because I was a homemaker before we got married, I thought Leon treated me as an equal. But after, he started acting as if he was superior. Being a housewife isn't exactly a walk in the park. Between cooking three meals a day cleaning, laundry, things that used to be casually handled when I was alone became a challenge, especially since Leon is particular about details and won't allow any slack. Dinner should always consist of at least three dishes. Also, ensure there are hot pancakes for breakfast. My mom managed to do that even while working. When I wake up in the morning, my suit and shirt should be ready on the hanger. Just grab my bag and go. That's the least you can do as a housewife, he'd say. That's how my parents always did it. Every time I tried to object, he would retort, You're a housewife, aren't you? Don't get too high and mighty while eating off my dime. Despite his complaints about me eating off his dime, the money Leon gave for household expenses was barely enough. I spent my days scrutinizing our budget, constantly scouring the internet for money-saving tips. One day, given the situation, I mused out loud, 
maybe I should go back to work. Leon responded with, didn't you so used to work at a law firm? Being a secretary, there won't make much money. Me? I won't allow you to neglect housework for that. So he wouldn't even let me return to work. I wondered if Leon was misunderstanding something. However, by this time, I was too tired of his constant complaints and shouting to argue. And truthfully, I wasn't sure if I could maintain the quality of housekeeping and carefully on if I was also working. Moreover, I didn't want to upset my parents who were so happy about our marriage, so I couldn't confide in them. But it wasn't just Leon's attitude that bothered me. He frequently invited his parents to our house, Mother's Day, Father's Day, his parents' birthdays. He would find any excuse to invite them over and have me prepare the meal. On these occasions, Leon would give me extra money, instructing me to buy some good fish or make a steak from premium beef. Every time he hosted his parents, Leon would give them gifts. His parents would eat and drink to their heart's content, treating our house as if it was their own, without thanking me. And then they'd leave. Once, I asked Leon, I think it's great that you honor your parents, and I don't oppose it. But can we also invite my parents occasionally? Leon immediately turned sour and snapped. Why would we do that? Understand this, I'm the one paying for the meals and gifts. Why should I spend money on your parents who aren't even blood related to me? He dismissed the suggestion. Resigned, I started secretly using my savings from before I was married to buy presents for my parents. Then one day, my parents contacted me, looking troubled. They told me there was a fire in the apartment next to their house and part of their home was burned down. Thankfully, they were unharmed, but the house required major repairs. They were temporarily living in a makeshift house. I decided to visit my parents. Even though they were going through a tough time, they welcomed me warmly. When my father gently asked, Is your marriage going well? A twinge of sadness hit me as I replied, Yes, we're getting along all right. When I inquired about their future plans, he explained that their partially burned down house had been standing since my great grandfather's era and was incredibly old to begin with. So they were thinking about letting it go. They were considering moving into a renaissance apartment. Going forward, my mother said, even though it's an old house, it's filled with memories of Jessica, so it's sad to let it go. At that moment, I made up my mind. I decided to discuss this with Leon when I got home. Do you remember I mentioned that my parents' house was caught in a fire and burned down? Given their age, I was thinking of buying them a new house, maybe one equipped with accessibility features, I said to Leon. He curtly retorted, Ha! Huh, where's the money coming from? I'm not putting in a dime. Just as I'd expected, I replied, I'm not planning on building a mansion, so it won't be a burden on you. I intend to use my savings for my single days. Leon pondered for a bit, then casually responded, even a law firm clerk can save that much. Well, if you're not using my money, then it's fine. So I decided to give my parents a house. I felt it was high time I paid back their kindness. Several months later, I said to Leon, I'm helping my parents move tomorrow. Leon replied, All right, I got it. But don't neglect your house chores, then retreated to the bedroom. The next day, I went to help my parents move. Unbeknownst to me, a group of individuals had begun tailing me. At that point, we carried my parents' belongings into the house, and we were relaxing in the living room, filled with joy at being together as a family after so long. But then, Leon and my in-laws suddenly barged in. While we stared in bewilderment, Leon declared, From today, this is my house. I was taken aback by Leon's sudden appearance. When I asked why he was there, he hardly replied, I heard you were moving today, so I followed you. When I responded, What? My house? 
What are you talking about? I don't understand, Leon stated. I've been supporting you all this while. Just marrying someone as clueless as you is something you should be grateful for. My parents have always eaten your terrible cooking with patience. Now it's your turn to return the favor. What a repulsive man, I thought as I stared at him in silence. Leon continued, I've canceled the lease on our apartment. Take your stuff and get out. At that moment, my confused father started to say, Leon, this house, but I stopped him from speaking. Strangely calm, a plan was taking shape in my mind. Instead of my father, I said, This house is our home, my parents and mine. What are you talking about? When I relayed that, Leon replied, laughing, Don't you understand English? I'm saying the house you bought was my house all along. This is not my parents' house and mine. Oh, I also left divorce papers at home. You be sure to submit them, ignoring my parents' attempts to speak. I told him, All right, I will follow your instructions. Then I asked the movers to reload the truck we had just unloaded, instructing them on what to do. As this happened, another truck arrived, carrying Leon's and his parents' belongings. I reassured my unsettled parents by saying, I will explain everything later, just follow my instructions for now. We then left the house together. During our ride, I explained to my parents what was going on. Listen, I've kept quiet about this until now. Once they heard everything, they understood and praised my actions. It reminded me of the joy I felt as a child when I was praised by my parents. A few weeks later, I got repeated calls from Leon. Reluctantly, I answered the phone without waiting for my hello. Leon shouted, Hey, isn't this the house you bought? Someone just told me they're going to call the cops if I don't leave. Yeah, that's correct. So when you said that house was ours, I was taken aback. That rental was your house, huh? I replied, laughing. This made Leon absolutely livid. Hey, quit mocking me, just explain. It wasn't the house bought for your parents. Then I explained everything to Leon, step by step. The house that I had bought for my parents was under renovation after the purchase. However, the day before moving in, the renovation company told us, due to our mistake, the work will not be finished on the scheduled date. It was entirely the renovation company's fault. Since they had contacted us in the evening, it was too late to cancel the movers. The renovation company, taking responsibility for their mistake, arranged a rental house for us to live in until the real house was ready. It was a model home that had finished its exhibition period. We planned to live there until the renovations were completed, but Leon and his parents moved in by mistake. When my parents tried to clarify, I decided to get revenge based on Leon's terrible misinterpretation. After that, I stored all of our belongings in a rented storage unit and lived in a hotel with my parents. Meanwhile, I submitted the divorce papers prepared by Leon as he had instructed, and that's how I got divorced from him. My parents told me, you should have consulted us sooner. However, I think things turned out for the best. I was able to spend time with my parents and managed to divorce Leon. Now I'm living with my parents in our newly renovated house. I've deliberately not shared our new address with Leon, so he has no idea where we live. Leon once asked me, but how are you going to support yourself without me? You were just a stay-at-home wife, right? With a sly smile, I answered, you know. I didn't expect you to be under this misconception for so long, but I'm a professional lawyer, you know. Leon seemed shocked and responded with a confused reply. When I first met Leon at a matchmaking service, he asked me what I did for a living. I told him that I worked at a law firm. He assumed I was a secretary. I let him believe that because whenever I previously mentioned being a lawyer, People often remarked how stuffy it sounded or how they didn't like being corrected based on the law. 
I hadn't imagined he continued to mistake me for a secretary after that. It showed how little interest he really had in me. I guess Leon wanted a housewife more than a partner. I think the reason he asked me to be a stay-at-home wife was just that I bought the house with the savings I had for my time as a single lawyer. If you explain that well, we're married, so I should have a claim to the property, I responded. The savings I had before marriage are mine, and they're not subject to the property division. If you have a problem with that, we can go to court, but I'll win, of course. Hearing this, Leon fell silent on the other end of the phone. I ignored such remarks from Leon, saying, Well then, goodbye. Be nice to your beloved parents, and with that, I hung up the phone. I heard about what happened next through a fellow attorney who used to be my colleague. Leon kept contacting me, unable to accept the situation. So I reluctantly decided to communicate with him through my attorney. Leon was insisting on me returning the money we had spent during our married life. However, after discussions through the lawyer, he understood that it was not feasible and seems quite disappointed. That's expected, after all. I became a stay-at-home wife because Leon asked me to, and it's a husband's duty to provide for his family. I did everything that I should have as a homemaker, and I didn't fall short. Leon had terminated our apartment lease himself, leaving him with no place to stay. Currently, he has moved back into the small condo where his parents lived, and the three of them are living there uncomfortably crammed into the small space. Leon had virtually no savings, he had a low salary, and yet he made me stay at home, only gave me the bare minimum for living expenses, and spent the rest of the money on his hobbies and gifts for his parents. Despite this, Leon was starting to desire a larger house. He seemed to have come up with this plan when I mentioned to my parents that I wanted to buy a house. Needless to say, it failed spectacularly. Even if it weren't a temporary home, Assuming that we would leave quietly is just stupid. It's pathetic to realize how naive my ex-husband was. Leon is now tired of caring for his parents in the cramped condo, and he has been pressing for reconciliation many times. Now that he knows I'm a lawyer, of course I've been ignoring him. I'm currently enjoying my time in my new house with my parents. At the moment, I'm not particularly keen on getting married again. However, a fellow attorney who I worked with during my divorce from Leon has been showing some interest. I am considering being a bit more positive about it, perhaps to give my beloved parents the joy of seeing their grandkids sooner.